Hey, uh, so I want to take a look at Micron. Uh, last time we looked at them was on June 13th. So between then and now, uh, they had their quarter three earnings and uh, they gave us guidance for quarter four. So we'll take a look at those. Uh, then we'll transition into just news that's happened uh, in general for the company between June 13th and now. And then we'll wrap up with the technical analysis. And uh, it looks like they were trading at $67 before on June 13th. Now they're at 68. So uh, I'm sure there's a story behind that. But in terms of just numbers, it's relatively flat. So we'll see if now's a good time to buy or when is a good time to buy. Uh, but let's just start off with the Q3 earnings. Uh, so. I realize I'm probably cutting off some of the top right corner. Uh, I'll try to read what's behind there. Uh, this is probably going to happen for a couple slides, but uh, it doesn't cover up too much. And I'll, again, I'll go through it as best I can. But starting off with the income statement here, so revenue, uh, what we're seeing, uh, we have green is this quarter, blue is the quarter from last year, and then in this third column, not sure. Th this is nine months ended so for nine months this column and blue on the far right is last year nine months so the things that i've highlighted are revenue for this quarter came in at i'm just gonna say 3.7 billion dollars cost of goods was 4.4 so terrible uh we're gonna get into it but Primarily why it's gone up is because they had to write off a bunch of inventory that shot up their uh, cost of goods sold here. Uh, this, I believe, is the last quarter that something like this will happen. We'll start to get more so uh, what normal gross margins for this company is going forward. But right now it's very bad. It's actually negative. For the full nine months, same thing, uh, which I not sure if you can see it it probably is cut off uh, but down here negative close to negative one billion dollars for the gross margin for the nine months uh, why this is so drastic is because last year that same nine months this company was making over 11 billion dollars their gross margin was like 50 percent and that's what we look for especially with a tech type company like this uh, so to go from 50% gross margin last year to now, they have negative. They're not even in a positive position. And of course, that trickles down to uh, operating income, uh, net profit. Those are both negative, so terrible. But again, we were expecting, they, they fully told us about six months ago that this is what was going to happen, and now we're living it. Uh, earnings per share... Uh, I put in a couple boxes here. Uh, I mean, what we're looking at is the actual financial statements, which they said they had a earnings loss of $1.73 per share. But at some point, we're going to go into Yahoo's analyst and their averages. They have 143. The financial statements say 173. Yahoo Finance has 143. I'm assuming our report is correct. Yahoo Finance update that unless I'm missing th something and also a correction would need to be made on the nine months uh, the financial statements are showing 403 Yahoo Finance is showing three dollars and 38 cents um, maybe something like dividends is missing but not as far as I could tell just wanted to point that out uh, so let's move on to balance sheet a couple things cash relatively flat it actually went up but a lot of cash here currently nine billion dollars receivable is at about 2.5 billion last year at this time it was five so that got cut in half uh, so they're not um receiving as many orders inventory that went up two billion dollars again that's because of the write-off situation overall though total current assets 21 uh, billion dollars Current liabilities, $5 billion. So in terms of a current ratio, they are they have four times what they need. They are plenty good, and uh, cash is 
nine billion, current liabilities five, so plenty of money. They're in a comfortable position. Uh, here we have statement of cash flows. So again, it, a nine day situation here. Last year, uh, at this time, their net income was over seven billion. Now all of a sudden it's minus four billion. Crazy. But again, and this is probably cut off at least the figures, but I have highlighted here this provision to write down inventories. They had to write off um, $1.8 billion. That was not happening last year. Uh, and I think I think this is combined, actually, uh, for the full year, 1.8. Because I think just this quarter they did about like $600 million. Uh, hopefully we see an article that shares that. But I believe that's what the case is. Uh, some other things that we noticed were uh, receivables. That went up uh, by about $3 billion when last year it was in the negatives. Inventory, uh, that went down to $3 billion compared to last year, which was $1 billion. Accounts payable and accrued expenses uh, went from 382 to now it's negative 1764. Uh, so big changes here. Expenditures from property, plant, and equipment. I believe they have some plans in the works, so I'm not sure if this $6 billion figure has that incorporated into it yet. Uh, we'll find out probably next quarter. Proceeds from issuance of debt, that was tripled from $2 billion up to $6.7 billion. Repayments of debt, uh, they didn't pay as much, so I just wanted to point that out. Uh, and the repurchase of common stock. They haven't been buying back as much. Uh, so yeah, those were the quick highlights from the cash flows. Uh, moving on, uh, just a quick look at the breakdown by revenue in terms of business units. So just want to point out their four business units are the computing and networking, embedded, mobile, and storage. Uh, similar breakdown for other chip companies too. Uh, slightly different names, but similar. You can kind of pick up the categories here. Uh, so the big earner is compute and networking, uh, which makes up, it, it seems like all four of these revenue units of theirs make up a decent portion. I mean, the range is from 1.4 down to 600, 600 million, 1.4 billion. Uh, the range is... Obviously, it's large, but it, it's not crazy big. It, these are very solid lot revenue items that we're looking at. But just to look at quarter over quarter, uh, their biggest two, their two biggest positions, the computing, that went up 1% quarter over quarter. Year over year, obviously, it's down. That's going to be like that probably for, for a full year maybe even two years, uh, that's, that second year, it might go down just a little bit year over year, possibly, hopefully not, but I, I, would be, I wouldn't be overly surprised if that happened. It's not supposed to happen, but potentially it could happen for some companies in certain categories, I'll say that. Uh, but computing, that went up 1% quarter over quarter, so that's a sign of turnaround. Embedded, 5%, again, Another sign of turnaround. Um, mobile going down. Uh, we've seen that in other companies such as TSM. So I imagine that's just hitting other companies such as what we're seeing here. And then storage, I believe that's data center aligned. So to see that pop by 24%, I've seen it with TSM. So if it's hitting Micron, that kind of checks out. But again, year over year, big declines. Uh, probably going to continue happening for another couple quarters, but we'll keep following it. Uh, next, we have Micron. It has this DRAM or DROM type chip. Hopefully, I'm saying that correct. And then a NAND type chip. Their DROM type chip makes up 71% uh, compared to the NAND at 27%. But what we're seeing quarter over quarter is that NAND chip is starting to pick up. I believe that's going to be like their majority revenue generator down the road, probably in a couple years. Uh, 
but for right now we're seeing it just slowly kind of even out. Uh, maybe it'll just stop at 50-50, but uh, overall NAND is meant to kind of pick up a little bit. Unless something, some new change happens in the, the DROM field. Um, but we'll keep, we'll, we'll just kind of see that, but that's kind of the projection. We're, we're imagining NAND is going to continue upwards and DROM downwards uh, as the two compete for sales. Uh, here we go. Um, so some outlook, so kind of leading into projections here. Uh, they're expecting for calendar 2023 industry bit demand growth have reduced to low to mid single digits in DRAM and to high single digits in NAND, well below the expected long-term uh, continual annual growth rate of mid-teens percentage range for DRAM and low 20s percentage range for NAND. Uh, so really what they're saying is they expected high expectations, uh, like 15% for the DRAM chips, 20% for the NAND chips, and to see quarters like this, where it's actually down, actually for a full year, that is so not supposed to happen. But again, we have to factor in how much things grew uh, over the past like two years. So to see it drop like this for one year, uh, I think it'll kind of, we're, we're balancing out. So we'll see what it's like, probably the end of this year, fourth quarter, 23, Hopefully we start to see it pick up uh, and then going into 24, that's when we'll really know what we need on a more annual basis. Um, but again, so we have the DRAM here at 71%. Revenue is down 2% quarter over quarter, but NAND going up to 27%. Its revenue quarter over quarter went up 14%. So we wanna keep seeing that. Hopefully DRAM can stay relatively balanced like it did and we'll see bigger pops from NAND going forward that would be great uh, and then their guidance they're projecting revenue of 3.9 billion next quarter with gross margins of still negative 12 percent so things are still not in agreement in terms of their inventory their cost of goods valuation compared to what they're selling it for they haven't been able to write the ship there yet uh, but we're seeing it slowly improve we know the potential can be 50%. I don't know if we'll see that um, again, but hopefully like 30s to 40%, hopefully they get back into that range sooner the better. Uh, and then diluted earnings per share, they're projecting $8.34. We'll see how that goes. We'll come back to this uh, you know, next quarter. And then here's Yahoo Finance's opinion on this. So just starting at the top, we have the earnings. They're estimating negative 118. Uh, if we go back, they uh, Micron was saying negative $1.34. I have to imagine if we look at the bottom, before they were estimating $1.58 negative, negative $1.58. It actually came in at negative $1.43, which was a surprise for them. Again, I'm not sure if that's right because we looked at the report and it said 1.73. Uh, I don't know if someone just had stubby fingers and hit the four instead of a seven or what happened there, but I think that's wrong. We'll see if that changes. Um, but the thinking that I imagine they had, looking at they saw the actual to the estimate was better than expected by 10%, that's what they're saying. So the fact that Micron was projecting one a dollar thirty-four loss in earnings per share, they're saying we think you're going to beat again at dollar eighteen. We'll see what actually how what the result is. Next quarter, they they imagine it's going to continue trickling downward. But here's the big thing. I mean, next year, I'm not. I'm probably cutting this off. But up here, it shows the average earnings estimate for the whole next year. They're still projecting a full year's worth of earnings losses. Yes, it's down to a dollar compared to their current projection of 450 this year. But I just thought it would be positive. I thought the turnaround would be more instantaneous. But it seems like it's really dragging out. 
And then it's not going to accelerate as fast as I would imagine, at least not for Micron. Like I thought it would hit the bottom and then just kind of like shoot off. For someone like Micron, it looks like it's like stepping down, down, down. And then they're imagining it's going to start stepping up, I imagine. It's just, it's taking longer. I thought it'd be more like, you know, you slide down, maybe settle a little bit and then climb back up. But that's just my thoughts. We'll see how it plays out. Uh, and then revenue, this is in line with what they said. Uh, they're also projecting 3.9 billion. Next quarter, 4.1. Current year, 15.4. We'll see if they can come within those ranges. I do like this though. They're projecting revenue for 2024 to be about 20 billion. I mean, that's nearly like a 30% growth in revenue. If they do something like that, that would really let me know that yes, it is turning around very quickly. Uh, that So that covers uh, their earnings and guidance. Now let's switch over to some news. Uh, so there's a handful of items, but we'll start with Micron says it's committing to China to invest $602 million in a plant. Uh, this would invest $603 million uh, over the next four years in its chip packaging facility in the Chinese city of Shen. Uh, this, we've heard this from uh, TSM. TSM's also getting into a chip packaging facility. Interesting to see Micron do the same. I would imagine this is kind of like a new revenue stream. Just the name of it, it doesn't sound like it's gonna have great margins. But at the end of the day, someone needs to do it and someone can pick up margins by doing it. Uh, TSM has put money into it. I think about like 2.7 billion. See a Micron put in 600. Uh, that's kind of saying something for Micron because they're uh, a little bit smaller. Uh, let me just confirm that. Yeah, they're, they're a little bit smaller, about half the size. So that's a decent chunk. Uh, but yeah, so that's going into China. Uh, Micron says half of China headquarter revenue is at risk due to a ban. So China, this is crazy. Micron is going to invest more money into China. But again, these are two unrelated items, but it's under the same company. So that's why it's interesting. They're, so we just went over how they're going to invest all this money into China because uh, they're a U.S. company. But this is at the same time that China's saying we're going to ban the sale of its memory chips to key domestic industries. Impact to China headquarter revenue equates to low double digit percentage of Micron's worldwide revenue. So basically what they're saying is if China were to max out the ban on Micron for this particular item, their memory chips, that they would instantly overnight lose 11% of their revenue. Uh, I believe we're going to touch on it, but it, in reality, the domestic industries that they're focusing on, that there's this ban issue, it's it's almost half of that. So that 11% that they would lose in total, it's more like they would lose half of that. Half of that 11% is key players. The other half is not key players. Uh, so they wouldn't lose the non-key players. Uh, still, that's, that's quite a hit, 5%, but not as bad as 11%. But yeah, just the juxtaposition there with the two, here's more money, but we're also, you're getting hit with fines, uh, different things though. So I don't think that really will snowball into anything more. But of course, if something changes, we can look into it. Uh, moving on, uh, this is another one. So Micron is nearing a $1 billion investment in India chip packaging plant. Again, packaging. Uh, they're toward setting up a semiconductor packaging factory in India, just a repeat of what I said. They also secured a financial support for $3.6 billion for a next generation plant it aims to establish in Japan. Uh, that's crazy. So Micron is investing a lot of money. They got 600 million in China, a billion, possibly more in India. And then it's saying 3.6 billion in Japan. Uh, again, I, can, I already know by looking ahead that that $1 billion in India, they're not paying all that. They're going to pay probably half of that, 
maybe less. Uh, the Japan deal, I think it's going to be close to 50%. It might be 40% that Micron would have to pay that. Um, and then at the bottom, it says Modi. This is India's, I think, prime minister or president or uh, has pledged $10 billion to woo chip makers to India, promising his administration will bear half the cost of setting up all semiconductor sites. Uh, so Micron took them up on that. And again, they're going after one of those 10 billion. Uh, I, I can't recall who all India brought in. I know India really wanted a company like TSM to come in. Uh, and I don't think they are, or at least I haven't heard anything about that. Uh, but a, a few companies are moving into my, or, uh, India. I'm trying to, I know I wrote it down, but uh, Micron's another one, I'll just say that. Uh, India clears 2.7 billion Micron chip testing plant ahead of Modi visiting the US. The government agreed production linked incentives worth 110 billion rubies or 1.34 billion US dollars. So AKA half the cost of that chip plant uh, India is going to pay instantly. It would invest up to 825 million in new chip assembly and test facility in Gujarat, India. The total investment in the facility will be 2.75 billion. Of that, 50 will come from the Indian central government and 20% from the state Gujarat. Uh, so again, they're going to get a $2.7 billion facility on their balance sheet. Uh, unless there's some details that they're leaving out, they're going to get that on their balance sheet and they only have to pay this much. So great deal. I can tell you that. Uh, here we also have uh, UFS 4.0 mobile storage built on a 232 layer 3D NAND delivers industry's fastest performance for smartphones. So new development, uh, Micron's kicking butt at memory, and that's why we follow them. They're pretty much the dominant player in the memory field. Uh, they're clearly in a bad slump. I would never expect them to have major growth spurts, but they're a major player and they would be deserving of such movement if they ever got it. Uh, but here we are, we have this Piper Sandler. They upgraded uh, their, pos their position on Micron. They raised the rating to neutral with a price target of 70. And we mentioned at the beginning that this company is currently trading in the 60s. So uh, nothing major there. Uh, memory chip price declines are slowing. So this is, again, this is another interesting thing. Just a little more background, I suppose. Again, they're in the memory chip industry. And memory chips are basically a commodity. Uh, manufacturers have little in the way of pricing power. That's the thing that stinks. So whenever they oversupply the market, they're gonna feel it. And even when they have their tools in place, I think that was like a unicorn year where they had gross margins of 50%. If they can get it back to like 30, 30 to 40%, I would be very thrilled to own this one. I'm worried that they're going to, if they can get it to 20, that would still be acceptable too. Um, I think 20 is within reason. I would prefer to see 30 to 40, but I think it has to be a very special uh, conditions to reach the, that amount. But uh, hopefully they turn around and we'll see how it plays out. Uh, to continue on, uh, their DRAM pricing is expected to be down 0 to 5% in the third quarter on a sequential basis. This compares to an expected decline of 13 to 18% in the second quarter. So again, it's slowing. NAND pricing is expected to drop by 3 to 8% in the third quarter, expected uh, decline between 10 and 15% in the second quarter. Uh, so again, the, the prices... The, the prices are going down ju just a little bit. Um, hopefully, hopefully they can, hopefully it turns around. Uh, next we have, this is the last one, and then we'll pivot into the technicals. Uh, so Micron delivers industry's fastest, highest capacity, HBM to advanced gener 
generative AI innovation, first in the industry to launch eight high 24 gigabyte HBM3 Gen 2 with bandwidth over 1.2 terabytes and superior power efficiency enabled by the advanced one beta process node. They're, they're improving. Uh, no matter what happens, it seems like they're continuing to innovate and improve. And that's what we want. We want them to do that. Uh, we'd like to see it. Uh, let's move into the technicals. Uh, let, me, let me actually get this out of the way. Um, and maybe what we'll do is let's just go to this. Uh, so it's, so again, at that time on June 13th, it was trading at 67. We didn't like that price point. That's why this is red. Uh, we did have buy points marked at 56, 65, and 68. So we felt like it was at a, at a buy point to some degree. It's just we felt 56 was the better price point, especially looking at their financials. Uh, I think we made the right call to be kind of cautious with this one. Uh, we noted resistance between uh, 64 and 73. Again, we felt 73 was the more uh, dominant resistance point. Again, being at 67, that's very close. So I'm understanding why I chose that. Uh, and then the note that we left was in an uptrend since December of 22, we were expecting terrible Q3. That actually played out. Uh, so we can remove that. Uh, should be good from there till 2026. Uh, we shall see. Uh, I guess I would say expecting slightly improved uh, Q4 should be good from there. Yeah, I'll just leave it at that. So let's actually take a look at what's what's the story here. Uh, we just heard the story, but what's the chart been doing? So going back to 613, which was right in here, and actually right in, okay, yeah, right at the top of this green candle. And let me move this over. Um, right here, that's where it was. It looks like it actually dipped down. It didn't go to 56, but it got to 60. I probably would have scooped it up at that point if I caught it. Um, but obviously we didn't catch it. Uh, but once it hit 60, it got back up and it got back up high enough where it went back into the range, uh, that uptrend range. So that purple, those two purple lines, that's the uptrend that we mentioned in our note. Uh, we can comfortably say that it's still in place. Uh, so I guess at this point, uh, number one, would I be willing to buy the dips on this? Yeah, I, I think so. So I'm going to add in buy dips. Uh, currently, we're in a dip. And I'm not sure if it's very visible, but there is a light green line in here. And I'm going to make it a little bit thicker. But this green line was meant to show support slight support, not major support. That's why it was so light. But if we go back in the past, it's been above and beyond $68 before. The first time it passed 68, it tried to pull back. There was support. That was back in 2020. Uh, going to 2021, uh, here's again uh, in the third to fourth quarter. Active pretty strong support here. Yes, it did dip below, but fairly firm there. Then most recently in uh, May to June of 2022, again, it, it stalled out there. It didn't want to crash. And then whatever happened in mid-June, possibly financial statements, uh, or I guess maybe they alerted us that their financial statements were going to be bad. And that's when it, <clears throat> that's when it really pulled back. And now you know, we've obviously been experiencing this, experiencing this. Uh, but here we are. We're testing that line again, 68. And we, we already checked it once. We passed it. It immediately pulled back. 
kind of bottomed out. Potentially, we could expand that uptrend. I, I try to keep it as tight as possible because, you know, I want to be as accurate as possible. But realistically, I could probably pull up the top a little bit to catch more. And same with the bottom. But again, I, I just want to try to keep it as best I can. I'll, I'll drop it down a little bit. Again, just to kind of catch more of the bottoms. That kind of helps the case because... Right now, we're, we just slightly dipped below that 68 uh, support line. We're at the very bottom of the uptrend. Uh, last time we did this, it pulled right back up. We're just at the bottom. I feel like uh, there's those two reasons why I'm actually going to, even though the price is relatively the same, uh, it's just the fact that where it was, it wasn't low enough. I felt like it could go lower. Ultimately, it did, but now the time has passed. We see that uptrend still in effect. We're at the bottom of that uptrend. We're actually near a support point, uh, a not a, a kind of mid type. It, it's not super strong, but it's also it, it's worth noting. I'll say that. Uh, so we're at 67. I have I'm gonna have a buy point on this one at. 68 uh, so what I'm gonna do I think we've gotten to the point where I'm comfortable removing 56 if this one wants to all of a sudden pull back break below 64 uh, yeah maybe 56 is on the table uh, so I guess for now I will keep it I'll keep 56 uh, but it's not gonna be the point of interest anymore uh, 68 so I had 65 that's going to be just changed to 68. That is my point of interest. Uh, the, and because it's right there, I do intend on picking this one up. Uh, another buy point I'm looking at, again, just kind of, let me scroll over. Let me pull this out. Uh, if I were to just project out about one month just to see where it would be, it'd be at 72. That's decent growth. Um, and that, of course, is worst case. We will see. Uh, but I guess since we're looking at it right now, and because it's at that point, I'm going to say 68. Uh, and again, I, I guess what we'll do is put we'll put in 72, because that would be in one month's time. We'll see if it's there. But ultimately, right now, 68 is my buy point. Uh, resistance we had at 64 which is this first resi hold on it's this first resistance line uh, down here uh, when I kind of traded sideways for a good six to eight months couldn't get above 64 now it seems to be comfortable it did pull back but yeah 64 is no longer in play it's it wants to stay above 64, so I'm going to remove that. Uh, then we had 73. 73 is resistance. I still like that number. If I was going to add in another one, right now it would be about 76. That would be the top of the range. So I'll plug in 76. Uh, and then the last number I'll put in is if we just skip ahead, the top of the range at the end of the month, beginning of next month, would be 79 so I'll put in 79 also um, but 73 I guess 73 is my point of interest right now uh, I'm I kind of feel like the uptrend will continue out if it's continuing to climb with these terrible quarter reports I can only imagine once it starts to get better it should continue upward so I like that. I'm going to update the date to today. Uh, earnings, if I just imagine skipping ahead, I'll update the date there. And then our note, let's see, Q4, should be good. Okay, so that's that wraps this up. Let me just show a quick recap of what we've gone through here. Uh, so we have Micron. I updated it to green. I feel comfortable that I would buy it at this point at 67. Uh, my buy point I have listed is at 68. I, 
potentially it could fall to 56, and yes, I'd pick it up there. But 68, it's at a point uh, where it's at the bottom of the uptrend range. It also found some slight support at 68 in the past. I think it will happen again here. So I'm comfortable picking it up at this point. We have resistance nerves at 73. Not a big gap here, but I, I don't think 73 will hold it up too long. But that's kind of the range we're working with. Tight window. I think it's a decent buy point, though. So I'll probably pick up at least a share. Um, updated the date. Earnings, probably not until end of September. And then the note we have here is uh, in that uptrend since December, that's still in effect. We have to buy the dips. Uh, so it's in a dip. Expecting slightly improved quarter four. Yes, we're expecting that. And then it should be good from there until 2026. We shall see if that's true. Uh, but that wraps this up. Uh, so again, if you have any questions you want to throw out or add any insight that maybe I uh, skipped or something like that, uh, feel free to comment down below. I'll do my best to answer the question or you know respond to any comments. Uh, otherwise, please like, subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.